Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And today we are going to be looking at the new patch for Legends of Runeterra. There are two new champions coming to the game. That's pretty exciting for the Path of Champions crowd. So let's take a look here. Patch 5.7 notes, tomorrow has never looked so good. Log in to play patch 5.7 playable on July 17th at approximately 11 a.m. Pacific. So that is tomorrow, going to be 3 p.m. Eastern, so that's pretty cool. New feature, Weekly Nightmares. So Weekly Nightmares are here with this release. Players can complete a new quest chain to unlock three new weekly adventures with increased difficulty from 4.5 to 6.5 star difficulty available on the world map. Okay, so first of all, we're getting a new quest chain. Great, we've basically done all the quests that we had except for dailies and weeklies. So being able to get a new chain of quests that we can complete, hopefully get some extra rewards, even though I'm not going to be able to complete most of these uh, adventures, uh, I will still benefit from completing like the first, second, and third areas and getting some quest benefits off of those. Uh, so we have a 4.5, a 5.5, and a 6.5 star uh, enemy every week. This is pretty cool. I assume that this is the ones that we're going to get for tomorrow. Um, Timo being at 5.5 is really exciting. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen Timo outside of the original area, the very first area that you go to. Uh, even though like Karma and Ezreal and Gangplank get reused in Aurelian Soul and other places, um, I don't think Timo has appeared anywhere. So I would like to, I would be interested to see what Timo's like improved deck and improved powers are like. Pretty cool. <clears throat> now we have a new champion being added. That champion is Jace. The Man of Tomorrow. So Jace is a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. And when he's summoned, you choose either Challenger or Quick Attack and give it to him based on whether he's going to use the Hammer or the uh, Shotgun Blaster. And um, in order for him to level up, you have to play two 6-cost spells or higher. That's pretty tough to do. And I don't think this is going to go very well. <laughs> so let me go ahead and move my webcam out of the way here. All right, Hypercharge. Uh, so the first star power is Hypercharge. When you play a six cost spell, reduce the cost of non-spells in your hand by one. So that's landmarks, equipment, and creatures. Cool. Um, this doesn't reduce the cost of your spells because if you reduce the cost of your spells, then you might not have a six cost spell anymore. And that's kind of the problem. So this is a payoff for playing Jace, but there's no way to get there. And that's really the issue. Let's see what else they're going to offer us. So being able to reduce the cost of, let's say you have four cards in your hand when you play this card, uh, you, you can't play a six-cost spell until turn three, and the only way you can do that is if you skip your turn one and your turn two. Um, and that's only if you don't have the, um, <clears throat> the uh, plus one starting mana. If you have the plus one starting mana, then um, I guess you can play a two cost card on your first turn and then you skip your second turn and then you can play on your third turn but the fact that you like have five mana on turn one and two if you have the unstable state makes it a little bit more awkward okay anyway um so when you play a six cost spell reduce the cost of non spells in your hand by one um let's say that you have three minions in your hand that gives you three extra mana to use that's decent but it depends on you know what sorts of cards he's going to have in his opening deck, which we don't know yet. And you know if you're if you're dead, that's the other question. Next, we get to unstable state. Now this part is awkward. So unstable state, plus one starting mana, round start, create a hextech anomaly in your hand if you don't already have one. Now for those of you that don't know what hextech anomaly is, hextech anomaly is a six mana spell that says at the start of the turn. I change this card into a random six cost spell. So uh, that's insane. This could be like a 10 mana card that you have in your opening hand, or it could be six mana, or it could be nine mana, you know, whatever, whatever spells you have access to. Um, and it could do something crazy like, you know, deal three to one, deal three to another, or it could do something like summon a bunch of spiderlings, or it could do um, destroy everything on the board when you have two cards on the board or a, you know, uh, you have no control over this, um, but you want to play it because you need access to six-cost spells. So 
first of all, <clears throat> this is probably an indication that there's only one six cost spell in Jace's starting deck if they feel like we need this, which makes sense. Um, with Jace, you know, having a bunch of high cost bricks in your deck is not going to make you very good. So this means that basically Jace is going to be a card that you don't really play until you've got two stars already, which is really bad. And then, even if you have the two stars, uh, is this good? It's it's fun. I do think it's fun to just have like a random spell that you can play, uh, but I don't know that it'll be good. Uh, you do want consistency in your deck to make your deck functional, especially at the higher levels. So having it be random is pretty dangerous. Then we upgrade Hypercharge to its epic form. When you play a 6 cost spell, reduce the cost of non-spells in your hand by 1, then give allies plus 1 plus 0 and a random keyword this round. That is really terrible. I don't know why they're doing this. Um, this is a new character, so I would expect power creep, not power reduction. Um, but obviously, first of all, Jace is inherently weaker than other champions because his mechanic is that you are going to play 6 cost spells, which is slow. It's very slow, and the and the powers that you're getting aren't making it any faster to play your six cost spells. They're just making it easier for you to recover the board after you've played your six cost spell, which is not good. Then, after you've played your six cost spell, you have um, give your allies plus one plus zero and a random keyword this round. So not even plus one plus one, and then the keyword is random. It's not like a keyword that you like if it was life steal or if it was tough, or if it was challenger, then at least you could plan around it. At least you could be like, okay, I'm gonna be able to recover some life this turn, I'm gonna be able to maybe uh, clear the board this turn, maybe my units will be protected from the, like, the spell that I'm gonna cast this turn. Those kinds of things would be interesting. Elusive, maybe I can try and go for an OTK this turn, but it's random. And when you have a random spell that you've been given and a random keyword that you're gonna get, and the random keyword doesn't even last until the next turn, on your three star? That seems really bad. Like, Echo, uh, for example, has, when I, when I see a unit in prediction, give it plus two, plus two, and a random keyword. And that can stack with itself. If you predict the same unit multiple times, uh, that unit's gonna get plus four, plus four, and then a random keyword. And then, of course, later it's gonna get, you know, doubled stats. So this seems really bad when you compare it to someone like Echo who has a similar effect uh, that's much easier to trigger um, and it's much more aggressive. Um, I, don't, I don't see why you would limit this to this round. It's not even that powerful of an effect. Uh, if you have six mana to play, then you're, you don't probably have that many units on the board. Yes, the, um, we're about to see that he starts with two units on the field, but you have to live. Those units are probably going to be used as blockers. So this, I don't know, this seems terrible to me. Next up, we have his four star, which is gearing up. At the start of the game, summon two armed gearheads. Okay, an armed gearhead is a one mana, one one, with quick attack and uh, augments. And augments is when you play a card that didn't start in your opening deck, you get plus one, plus zero permanently. That's a cool effect to get on a monster with quick attack, but it does raise the question of what exactly is Jace going to have in his deck that's creating cards. I know that Piltover and Zaun does have a lot of created card options, but Jace has never been one of the characters that's utilized that too much. Uh, you do have the created uh, card of the, the random six cost card that you get from your power, I guess, but you need a lot more than just one created card to make use of an armed gearhead. Um, and then there's also the question of if you are going to give Jace a focus on spells and creation, uh, isn't he just going to feel like a slower Echo? And and really, you know, Echo has um, the, your created cards cost one less, so Echo is spamming a lot of spells, and he gets extra spell mana every round, whereas Jace is waiting to play a spell and then potentially refilling some mana afterwards. Uh, this just feels like it's going to be uh, absolutely terrible. I mean, I'm sure they play tested this, but until I see what's in the starting deck, I can't, I can't imagine this is going to do anything. This looks just 
awful. And I know Volibear functions, and I'll, I'll compare him to Volibear, because Volibear is like a slower card. Volibear functions, but Volibear specifically has the ability to reduce the cost of every card that he plays by two per time that he's slain a unit. And slaying units is not that difficult, even in a slow deck, because you're going to be trying to stall out for the board, you have AoE, you have challenger units. It is easy to kill units with Volibear. Um, but there's no cost reduction here. The cost reduction happens after you've played the six cost spell, not before. So you have to survive long enough to play a six cost spell. And the faster that you do that, the less you're developing on the board. Because you're saving your mana for spell mana. And you don't get sorcery, so you don't get extra spell mana every round. Now, if Jace gets sorcery from like the uh, uh, adventure powers, then that's going to be really, really strong. He's going to be very, very powerful. The difference between a sorcery run and a non-sorcery run for Jace is going to be huge, because it gives you literally three extra mana. You can then play a six-cost spell on turn two after playing something on turn one that was two mana. And you can even play like a spell that turn two, because you're getting the spell mana back for free. That's what should have happened. But um, a lot of people say that this didn't happen because uh, both Jinx and Echo had sorcery, and they don't want to give every Piltover and Zaun character the same four-star four ability. But that's kind of the problem, because Piltover and Zaun is all about spells. I don't know what else you can really do here. I don't think this is good. I, I think that this is probably going to be uh, uh, terrible. Let's look at the rest of it. Obviously, the five-star is Mana Gem. It always is. But for those of you who don't know, Game start, get an extra mana gem, so when you get your mana flow, you will have three starting mana instead of two. Excellent. Really good for Jace. Once you have this, then you can um, you can play your uh, six cost spell in two turns, because you have three mana, and then you pass, and you get your three spell mana, and then you get a six mana. Uh, that makes you less dependent on sorcery, at least for the very beginning of the game. But then, like, you have to play your six-cost card, and then you have to start summoning things with this discount that you're getting. And it's only one. So you're only reducing the cost of the card in your hand by one. You have zero mana left. So unless you have some really good one-drops, this is going to be a problem. Now, that's the other question, right? These armed gearheads by themselves, not very good. But if Jace has armed gearhead in his starting deck, and he has, like, an item that gets on them, like, maybe... Um, it wouldn't be Phage, because Phage is for, like, mid-cost cards, but if it was Studded Leather... If it was Studded Leather or maybe Giant Spelt to give it either a 2-2 two -two or a 1-3, then I can reasonably see that if you had, like, maybe, like, one arm Gearhead in your hand on turn 2 and you had the 6 mana that you could play it, but, again, this is, like, 5 stars. You have to get there. You have to unlock five stars with this deck before you can get this, like, being able to play your six-cost spell on turn two. That's really, really frustrating for a lot of players, I bet. And then lastly, we have the six-cost uh, ability, which is uh, after you play a six-cost spell, deal ten damage to a random enemy or the enemy nexus if there is no random enemy. Obviously, that's insane. Obviously, every uh, six-cost ability is insane, and none of them are particularly better than any others. You could compare this to every other six cost ability and they'd be about equal in power. You just win the game when you trigger the effect. Uh, yeah, no, so I'm not uh, impressed with Jace. I think that he's going to fall flat and uh, we will see if they buff him. <clears throat> Next up is Pike. Pike is getting a rework and this rework is great. So right now what Pike can do with his three stars is he gives, I think, four random units in his deck, Mariner's uh, Ruse, which gives them plus one, plus one, and Lurk. And that kind of helps with the Lurk mechanic. So for those of you that don't know what Lurk does, Lurk is, um, if your unit has Lurk, when it declares an attack, you can look at the top card of your deck, and if it is also a Lurker, all of your Lurker allies get plus one, plus zero everywhere permanently. That's really, really powerful. It's very aggressive, but the problem is, it's very reliant on you building the deck around it, and that's hard to do when you have no control over which cards are being added to your deck. They're being offered to you randomly. So uh, they had to basically uh, devote almost all of the constellation to making the deck more consistent. 
and they did that this time around too but they at least gave us some benefit to lurking other than just the plus one plus zero in addition to making it more consistent which i think is a huge increase a huge improvement over the last uh, version of pike so we have abyssal might lurking grants an extra plus zero plus one there we go so now when you play pike in path of champions it's a better than playing pike in pvp your lurk gives you health Amazing. Uh, so one star, your lurks now give plus one, plus one, instead of plus one, plus zero. Great, fantastic. That's a huge board buff if you have like three units. That's plus three, plus three. Um, and you also get to like distribute that amongst multiple blockers. This could completely change the tide of the board uh, every time that you use it, so huge. And one of the biggest problems with lurk is that your units would get blocked because you have to attack with them to give them the stat buff. If they, they get blocked, they're all, they're all small and weak. They get destroyed, you have nothing left. Um, this is a huge problem with Pike in the real game as well. So this fixes it a lot. For his epic power, we have Phantom Hall. Plus one starting mana. And then at the start of the round, if you have the attack token, summon an ephemeral shark, Sharkling. Sharkling is a one mana, one two with Lurk. Okay, that's really strong. So what that means is you can trigger Lurk to buff all of your units including the ones you haven't played yet, the ones that are in, that are still in your deck, without needing to risk the cards on your board. First of all, you don't have a guarantee that Lurk is going to trigger, because you don't know what the top part of your deck is, usually. And secondly, even if you trigger the Lurk, if you lose, you know, two units, because your opponent has two units to block with, was it really worth it for you to buff your board later? But you have to trigger it every turn, otherwise you're going to fall behind. So getting a card that literally exists only to trigger the Lurk and can trigger it by itself is perfect. This is a huge buff. This power by itself makes the entire constellation much worth it. Very, very good, very good change. Uh, next up we have the three star Abyssal Might 2. Lurking grants an extra plus one, plus one. That is an improvement over the previous one. So now when you Lurk at three stars, you get plus two, plus one total. That means that your one, one becomes a three, three. Uh, sorry, 1-2 becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, that's great. That's fantastic. And then it becomes a 5-4, and then a 7-5. You know, it's going to be really, really good to have these lurking abilities. And, of course, you can trigger lurk on your opponent's turn with the free attack monster that lurk gets. So you, it's not just on your turn. If your deck is consistent, you will be able to trigger it on both players' turns. Plus 2, plus 1 every single round is actually, that's like um, a Lissandra power. There is a Lissandra power called, um, you know, I think it's called uh, Dog Pack or something like that. And it's, um, it's uh, at the end of the round, give all dogs everywhere plus two plus one. And it, the deck is full of dogs. And that's that's really, you know, it, it snowballs up pretty fast, even though all, their, all of them start as two twos and two threes. Uh, they become really, really powerful. So this is similar to that, and that's kind of cool. I like it. For his four star, we have Lion Weight. This is a rare power. Allies everywhere that are cost three or less are lurkers and have lurk. Great. So that makes the deck significantly more consistent. You pick up a random three cost card um, from your, you know, from your support champion pool or from a reward, and it's going to have lurk without you needing any special items. Huge, huge benefit. Makes your deck a lot more consistent. It is annoying that you have to get four stars first for this to work, but hopefully, you know. There'll be an event or something that helps you get Pike, uh, you know, gems. I know there's going to be like a bundle that you can purchase. I don't really uh, recommend any of you do that. But uh, once you get to four stars, you will see your deck function a lot better. Next up, we have Mana Flow, of course. And then lastly, Death from Everywhere. Your spells everywhere have Lurk. And when a card lurks, if it is a follower, summon it attacking, otherwise draw it. Now, um, it's important to note that there are... Uh, so spells having lurk means that you can actually like uh, put spells in your deck. One of the biggest problems with Pike beforehand was that since spells didn't have lurk and you couldn't control what was on the top of your deck, a lot of people just said, don't, don't go anywhere near spells, cut all your spells, never play spells, and that made the deck a lot harder to play because you didn't have any removal. This is fine. This is really good. Um, being able to uh, uh, win a card lurks if it's a follower, summon attacking, otherwise draw it. Obviously, if you trigger this on turn one, you pull out an extra 
one one that's now a three two that's powerful but then on turn four you pull it out and it's like a, an eight five because it's had lurk trigger four times you know the the longer the game goes on the more and more powerful this ability will be it will win you the game and it doesn't even summon it as an ephemeral unit so if your opponent doesn't block your extra unit or they don't uh kill it then you just keep the unit you, you like what if it's a three cost card then you just got the three cost card on your board for free you drew a card and you played the card for free all you miss is the play effect so this is a really really good ability um and of course i said that right six star abilities are all really good um, we also know what the uh, extra stars are going to be for both of these characters. They've been uh, put out uh, other places. Um, for Pike, it's uh, support champions have Mariner's Ruse, and followers you acquire in adventures that cost four or more also have Mariner's Ruse. Mariner's Ruse is plus one, plus one, and Lurk. So basically everything in your deck except for equipment and um, uh, landmarks will have Lurk. So don't, just, don't draft any equipment or landmarks, and you'll be lurking every single turn. Really, really strong. Um, then for Jace, it's... Um, uh, for Jace, it's uh, spells you acquire that cost six or more have elixir of sorcery, which is they cast twice, which triggers Jace's level up. So uh, Jace, uh, if you play a six-cost spell that has uh, elixir of sorcery, that's two spells that cost six or more, so Jace will level up. And that's fine. Um, it makes Jace leveling up faster, but then that's not good enough by itself. All right. Now, <clears throat> champ level upgrades. Before, Redfin Hammerstout started with Great Club. Now it starts with Speed Wraps. Um, this is Overwhelm versus Quick Attack. Um, quick Attack is much more important because it allows you to keep the mon monster on the board. Yes, Overwhelm was very, very good because it meant that you could kill people. But I don't think that you're going to have a problem killing people with this new version of Pike. Your Lurk is a lot more consistent, and you are able to summon more units faster. So I think that the way that you're going to win the game with Pike now is simply by having six units that are getting plus two, plus one at the same time, as opposed to having three units that are getting plus one, plus zero, and, like, crushing your opponent. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be okay. Then it says, We've tweet we tweaked Pike's curated card list so that lurkers show up with higher frequency throughout the adventure. So uh, Riot has stepped in and they have intentionally changed the way that Pike's drafting system works to pull more cards that have lurk so that you have a more consistent run, although it's not going to be the same every time. That's really important. Uh, you know, if you uh, go from having Rek'Sai every one in six runs to every one in four runs, then you're going to have Rek'Sai a lot more often, and Rek'Sai is a big part of how uh, Lurking balances. Um, so having Pike without Rek'Sai and having Pike with Rek'Sai, those are two huge differences. So yes, it, you shouldn't have Rek'Sai every single run, but you should reasonably be able to pull Rek'Sai, especially against Lissandra and Swain, um, you know, without needing to lose like eight times. So I like this. Alright, new items. So we have Jace's Epic Item, which is Jace's Hextech Battery. Uh, epic Items are going to be locked behind um, the bundle, so you have to pay money for this. Um, but regardless, here's what it does. Uh, it gives uh, the champion equipped to it plus one, plus two. And then when, I'm level, when I level up, refill three mana. Not three spell mana, three mana. Pretty good. If I'm Jace, refill six mana instead. Okay. That will definitely make Jace a lot easier to use, assuming that you can even play Jace himself, which that part remains to be seen. He's just a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, this does make him a 5-6, but he doesn't have any way to reduce his own cost. And when he hits the board, I mean, if you give him Challenger, a 4-man, a 5-6 with Challenger, it'll do something it's not gonna i don't necessarily think that's gonna help you like clear the entire board but you do have two other relics so maybe you just give them other benefits maybe maybe you go quick attack and then you go full build so they'll have challenger without choosing challenger which would be pretty good pikes is a lot better deadly harpoon plus two plus oh and challenger uh yeah i think a lot of i think a lot of characters would play this i think actually i think every character that has quick attack would play plus two plus oh and challenger uh, Echo would love this. Um, uh, Lucian would love this if we ever get Lucian, which we never will. 
Um, who else has quick attack? Um, uh, I don't think I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of like a, a champion that's in Path of Champions that has quick attack, and there's not too many of them, which makes sense because they're all really good. Uh, we need Draven in Path of Champions. I was really hoping that Draven would be the next one, but I understand that the second season of Arcane is coming out. Um, in addition to plus two plus zero oh and Challenger, which is again insane. Uh, at the start of the game, shuffle two Death from Below into your deck and grant Death from Below a random epic item. Fantastic. <laughs> death from Below is a great support card for Pike. It has Lurk. It's going to make it easier for you to trigger Lurk. It's going to make it easier for you to level up Pike. And then giving it a random epic item. Uh, okay, so the epic items that spells can get are like, uh, while I'm in your hand, reduce my cost by one every time that you play a spell or... Um, uh, when I'm activated, you can have like a 50% chance of returning me to the hand with a zero cost this turn or something like that. So like, like the epic spell items are all really, really good. And uh, I'm sure that Death From Below will be just a fantastic card. That's um, uh, an ally strikes an enemy and then put it on top of your deck for, I think, two mana. So fantastic spell that you want multiple copies of. Okay. A new achievement quest, Afraid of Nothing 1 to 6, is... Or, uh, sorry, Afraid of Nothing 1 to 4. Available once you've unlocked the third League of Adventure at level, Legend level 15. Requires you to defeat weekly adventures of a specific star level. So, that lets you <clears throat> get these uh, new Nightmares, which is fine. And then uh, there's the bundles, which are not that interesting. Ah, here we go. Okay, so they've changed some powers, and then this is important. So, uh... <laughs> I just won, I just beat Lissandra today for the first time. And I beat Lissandra because, or I sorry, I beat Aurelian Soul yesterday because of the um, Stabilized Shadow Totem uh, like mix up. Um, and uh, <laughs> they're, they're nerfing that literally the day after I got uh, a crazy run with it. So Stabilized was when you summon a champion, uh, create an ephemeral copy of it. And then Shadow Totem is when I'm summoned, create an ephemeral copy of me. And the problem was, if you had both of those and you had, like, Deathless, which is when I die, summon me again with uh, plus one, plus... With one health and I'm stunned, you would essentially have, like... Uh, your, you would play your champion and it would literally just, like, summon itself over and over and over again. And that was really good for on-summon effects. So... I was playing um, Volibear against Aurelian Soul, and uh, the only reason I won, literally the only reason I won, is because I had Sivir with Black Cleaver, Titanic Wake, and um, uh, the Iceborne Gauntlet. So what she, <laughs> so what she did was, I would summon Sivir. She would get uh, double stats from the Black Cleaver. She would go up to being a ten six. Then the Titanic Wake would trigger if you summon a unit with eight or more attack. It gets plus eight, plus eight. So she would become an 18, 14. Then she had, um, when I'm summoned, strike the lowest health unit. So she would strike the lowest health unit because of because um, of Volibear. Volibear has that effect. Then she had Iceborne Gauntlet, which was, uh, when I'm summoned, to capture the strongest enemy. So she would capture an enemy. Then I would summon a copy of her that was ephemeral, and that would be, um, it would have the same stats as her, so it would be an 18, 14, and then it would get plus eight, plus eight, and double its stats again, because it has the same items, so it would be, uh, I think it was like a 48-38 it ended up being, and then it would strike, and then it would also capture an enemy. So it would capture an enemy, it would strike, then it's ephemeral, so it dies immediately. So then the monster that uh, it captured gets spit out, but then since I had the Deathless, or no, I had Undying Legion, which is um, the first unit that you that dies each turn comes back. So Silver would come back, gain the stats, strike, snatch. Then she would summon an ephemeral copy again, which would strike, snatch, Literally, I, I don't know, like, I could show you a replay. I probably should, but I didn't record it. Literally, just by paying four mana, I, like, cleared Aurelian Soul's entire board, and I had, like, 70 damage on the field. So that's what the stabilized Shadow Totem nonsense is, is all about. <laughs> it's really, really fun, but it is a little overpowered. So now it's when you play a card as opposed to when it's summoned. You do get the crazy effects, but only one time, which is fine. <laughs> like... It doesn't need to be an infinite loop. Um, uh, their context, 
Both Stabilize and Shadow Totem cause a steady stream of bugs and unintuitive interactions. Uh, that's that's true. <laughs> when you have when you have a champion that summons itself infinite times, yeah, that can cause a lot of bugs. Uh, so we're making this change to make them work more predictably. While this change could be see perceived as a nerf, it will actually result in some buff cases. Auto equip now works the way you want it to, etc. Uh, this is cope. No, they are completely wrong. No one wants auto equip to be equipped to the uh, shadow, the ephemeral champion. Uh, they want it to be equipped to the correct champion. Thank you. And auto equip is bad anyway. All right, uh, the Emporium has been changed to offer players more options in light of our focus on PvE. So uh, since they uh, stopped releasing new cards for the PvP stuff, they're going to make more uh, options for you to get more star powers. Makes sense since they just doubled the amount of PvE content. And then a discussion about ranked uh, and uh, the rotation, which if you care about it, these are the champions that are rotating out and these are the champions that are coming in and you can read that in the patch notes. Okay, my name is Serafi and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.